did not know he was talking about the monitors on the wall. Uh, so I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, the monitors are something that uh, they're trying to figure it out. If they don't get it figured out, uh, we just have to rely on the Spirit of God. Amen. We had church before we had those things. Amen. 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 So I just want to let you know that that's why they're not on. Something's going on and they're going to try. He can't figure it out today because we're in church. Amen. But hopefully, maybe tomorrow, whenever he gets a time, he'll come and they'll figure out what's going on. But nevertheless, God is still good and we're going to still worship him. We're going to lift him up and praise him unto his mighty name.
We are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Amen. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Yeah. Cast down, but not destroyed. Loud to you. We as the church of God Amen. will stand. Yes, sir. Amen. We'll stand. Let us pray. Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we thank you for how great you are. Bless us, strengthen us, and keep us that we serve you forevermore. Bless these services and make it with you in every day. Father, we continue to pray throughout this, this month and our lives. Yes. Yes. Bind our minds and our hearts together yes. that we'll be your servants. Yes. That we'll understand that we as individuals, yes. we as a church family, yes. Yes. even we as individual families, yes. Yes. we're going to be troubled. Yes. But let us not be distressed. Yes. We're going to be perplexed. But we shall not be in despair. Yes, we'll even be persecuted. Hello, hello. But we will not be forsaken. Yes, Lord, we'll be cast down, walked on, trodden yes. upon. Yes. But we shall not be destroyed. Yes, because yes. we're walking with you yes. day by day. Yes. So we thank you yes. and we glorify you. Yes. In Jesus' yes. name.
we've done anything contrary to your will since we opened our lives this morning. We ask you to forgive us. Give us a clean heart and a new spirit. Yes, yes. Father, I I stand here this morning. Asking for mercy. I ask you, Father, that you would bless each and every one of us as men. Mm. As other loving boys. Bless them. That they may have clarity. Clarity. They may have consistency. They may be faithful their will and their way, to their home, to their workplace, to their goings and their comings, their little rising and their laying down. I should bless each and every one of us as we go to and fro. Keep us in your care. Keep us, keep us. You said you never leave us, not forsake us. You said you with us until the end of time. These blessings we ask in your divine name. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And the sinners shall be converted to you. God, we thank you again, Lord. God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us so far. And God, we know that as long as we are here on this earth, there is still more knowledge to be gained. There is more understanding. God, we will never know all the mysteries of you. But one thing that you desire, O oh God, is that we stand boldly on your word, O oh God. That we go where you want us to go, O oh God. That we allow you to lead us in the path of righteousness of God. So God, right now, I ask that whatever is broken, that you fix it, oh God. That's right, that's right. Whatever spirit is down, God, that you lift it up, oh God. Mm. And God, for those who don't know the way, oh God, we ask that you show them. God, we ask that when we walk out of this building, oh God, after we have come together and worship you, O oh God, after we have come together and learned of you and learned of your ways, O oh God, Amen. God, we ask that we go out representing you, O oh God, not the name of a church, O oh God, but representing the name of the Lord. Yeah. So God, right now we ask that you fill us with your spirit, O oh God. That we will have our mind focused on you, O oh God, and your word. You've already heard it. You said you'll never leave us, nor forsake us. That you will be with us until the end of time. Yes, Lord. So God, we ask that you touch each touch right now, Lord. one of us here, God. From the pastor to the usher. Yes. From the little children to the grandmother. Yes, God. The great grandmothers of God, the school teachers, the bus drivers, the Sunday school teachers of God, yeah, yeah, yeah. the doctors, the lawyers of God, Touch Lord Jesus. the retirees of God. Yeah, yeah. Go to the nursing home of God, the street corners of God, the jailhouses of God. <clears throat> Wherever there's a desire for you to be there, oh God. So God, we ask that you look down on Lounge Hill, oh God. Yes. We ask that you give us, that you give us what we need to be the church family that you want us to be, oh God. Yes, yes. Not by a last name, oh God, but by what you want us to be, yeah, oh God. That's right, that's right. And so, God, we thank you, God. Thank you. We thank you today, oh God. We just ask that you be with us, oh God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
scripture said the prayers of the righteous avail them much. So if we are going to be what God wants to be,
God is. Uh, and you know what God will do? God said, go ahead and try that. But then he'll let us know whether or not it needs to be in place. And there's nothing wrong with it. Make, I'm just make, uh, making it known that look, we tried that, it didn't work. So let's back it up and try it. Try something else or do it a different way. But I wanted to let you know that uh, beginning next Sunday, like I said, we're going to get by the day, whether or not we live or offer there. Some of you may have already dropped those in the best and come in. If you didn't, we're going to make sure we're going to make sure you have an opportunity to give before you leave here today. Amen. Amen. But uh, definitely, yeah, next Sunday, we will go back to the way we were doing it, uh, receiving an offering. Um, and the best of you, uh, when you come in, and, uh, and, and, and we will go back also on next Sunday as to ushering the people out. Because of other things that are being done here in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I wanted to let you know that. Uh, and, uh, I had Sister Duggan to go ahead and put a little special uh, notice on the new program. You'll see on the, the bottom of your program, uh, the announcement section, a little special notice pertaining to this. Uh, this book. We're going to have her to run that uh, for every week that she has space on the program. She's got to announce this, and so she's not going to get it on that every week. But every week that she has space on the announcement sheet, I will let that, that, that little announcement ran to remind everybody uh, of the procedure. Amen. Thank you, Kylie. We appreciate it. Also, uh, I think that's all the announcements that I had. Um, we have with us today a gentleman uh, from the Gideon, uh, the Gideon International. Had a few people uh, in the last couple of years uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, we, they were not able to come. Things have changed. Uh, they're back out and going now. Uh, and by the way, there's some brochures out front on the table. We would love for you to pick one up and take it with you because uh, even of what the uh, church has done as far as, as, far as the donation uh, to the Gideons. You may want to do something personally, uh, and this will you share more information with you, and uh, uh, also provide a means of giving uh, envelope to give if you so desire to give personally. So please, uh, I'm going to allow him to come now. Uh, we've talked uh, in preparation for today, and uh, his name is uh, Brother Keith Snyder. I was going to tell you that uh, I will tell you he's from North Augusta, but I was going to tell you that he serves as South Regional Director of the South Carolina Gideons, but he informed me this morning that as of yesterday, he's been elected to a different position. And I'm reminded of the scripture where it says he is of age and he can speak for himself. Amen. So whatever, whatever he wants you to know about him, he will tell you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, yes, that, that, it's a new position. Uh, I'm now the, the state uh, chaplain for the Gideon Ministry. Uh, through, uh, so I'm looking forward, forward to that new position. Well, good morning, Lowndes Hill Baptist Church. It is a joy and a pleasure of mine to be with you here this morning. And on behalf of Gideon's International, uh, I greet you. I greet you and thank you for this opportunity to uh, come to you and, and speak and tell you a little bit about the Gideons International. But let, me, let me start with this. Let me just uh, say, imagine with me, imagine in your minds, going to a school where there are no buses, no automobiles of any kind, just a well-worn pathway leading up to a one-room schoolhouse. And imagine students being summoned by the ringing of a cowbell and, post and the teachers, teachers postponing studies uh, to gather them under a tree in a courtyard so that a Gideon can come and hand out testaments like these to each student and tell them about Jesus. And before that Gideon leaves, the headmaster comes to that, to that Gideon and tells him, we are so grateful that you came and gave the children Bibles and told them about Jesus. Now they can have a book, the very first book that they can call their very own. And he, he looks at him and through tears starting to form in his eyes, I know, I know that God sent you here today. Amen, amen. Well, Gideons are not special people. 
We're just ordinary men with a special God-given opportunity. We're an international, interdenominational association of business and professional men with a special God-given opportunity. We have open doors that mainstream churches typically do not have. And we have the opportunity to reach people for Christ who would never darken the door of a fine, wonderful church like this uh, and, and to hear the, the gospel preached or taught. Uh, men like, like 38 inmates on death row in a South Carolina prison who recently uh, were visited by six Gideons who brought them the gospel and told them about Jesus Christ and ministered to those men on death row, some of which who made a profession of faith. Don't know if they're still alive today, but they made that profession of faith. And every day at our international headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee, unsolicited letters are re received from people whose lives and eternal destinies were changed by God's word, God's holy word, and believing in the scriptures. And, and scriptures that churches like, like Lowndes Hill Baptist Church has helped us to, to buy and place in the walkways of life in many different places. Um, and we appreciate your generous support, okay? Your financial support is important, but you know what's even more important? More important to me? Your prayers. Amen. We need your prayers. Yes, Satan sir. is attacking us like you would not believe and spreading God's word. Yes, we need your prayers yes, to push Satan back where he belongs. We need your help. And I cherish your prayers. And I ask you for them. Well, let me tell you a little bit more. Let me tell you a little bit more. Like a, a soldier, this soldier in, in Tennessee who received a testament during his military induction and carried it with him into battle. And he carried that testament with him through war zones and the uncertainty of life, the uncertainty of returning from that war zone. Like a nurse in South Carolina who carried a, a pocket testament like this with her and ministered to one of her dying patients just, just days before she died. Like a Jewish man in North Carolina who, for, because of a long chain of events and bad decisions, uh, his marriage was broken and he went to a motel to take his own life. And as he sat down in that room, he contemplated things, and uh, he saw a Bible on the top of a TV. And he went over and he, he picked up that Bible. He was mad at it, and he slung it across the room. He, he, he just could not stand anything about God, could not stand it. And he, 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 that Bible was on the floor, and he went to kick it. He wanted to kick it under the bed, and he kicked it with his foot. Well, as you know, beds and hotels, motels nowadays, they're built on a, on a wooden frame, so you can't get things underneath that bed anymore. So that Bible, guess what it did? It bounced right back to him. Well, that made him even more mad. So he bent down, he was going to pick up and throw that Bible, and he just happened to look at, at the page that was open. It was open to, to John 14, 27, and he looked down, and he saw a word that he had never thought about before, peace, peace. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Well, that struck a chord. That struck a chord. He sat down and he started reading that Bible. And he kept reading it and reading it and reading it. And, and his heart was, was just turned to God. And he, he just, something came over him. And, and he, he called a, a pastor within a, a couple of days. And that pastor and he sat down and through some training, that man born Jewish, is now a pastor of a Baptist church in North Carolina, a flourishing Baptist church. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? And a young man on a college campus who received a, a New Testament, his name was Craig Groeschel. Perhaps you've heard of him. He's now the, a pastor of one of the, the largest online churches uh, in the United States. Well, praise God for the power of his word. The Bible tells us his word goes forth out of his mouth and does not return empty. That's right. That's right. It accomplishes what he sent it to do. That comes from Isaiah 55, 11. You've probably heard us quote it before, but I hope you'll remember that verse. Every day, every day, we need the prayer support of Christians and churches everywhere. Uh, we solicit your prayers for our ministry, 
as we carry out regular scripture distributions locally at, at military installations, uh, prisons, hospitals, nursing homes. Uh, we go to uh, some schools, private schools mainly, police, firefighters, uh, first responders, uh, to, uh, area fairs and festivals that you may be having, uh, crisis pregnancy centers, uh, women's ba uh, battered women's shelters, and many other places, many other places. I always have to look at my notes because the list has grown so long, I always forget one, and I don't want to leave one out. But if, uh, in your church, your church is, is, has supported us, first of all, financially, and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, but also with your prayers. You have supported us with your prayers, and it's those prayers that are keeping us going. Uh, you received one of the pamphlets. Uh, uh, pa Pastor mentioned that to you. Please take that home and read it this afternoon. Uh, a lot of good information in there, a testimony in there, and also a website, gideons.org, gideons, plural, .org. You can go there and read more testimonies, read all about the ministry, uh, wonderful information there. I uh, invite you to, to, uh, to go read that. Um, in closing, let me give you uh, another verse. This is one of my favorites. It comes from Psalm 96.3, and it's a command. It's not an option. It's a command. Declare his glory among the nations, my Lord, my Lord. his marvelous works among all the peoples. My pastor is fond of reminding us that all means all. So help us do this, all right? Help us do this. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Church, for listening to me today, and I thank you for your support. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let us say amen. amen. Please make sure you pick up one of the brochures out front as you go out. Thank you. At this time now, let me please take men, uh, make mention. I want to thank the Brotherhood Ministry. Uh, for the making contact with our sick and shut in this past week. Uh, and we pray, continue to be in prayer for all of our sick and shut in. Uh, it just, it came to my attention a few moments ago, just as I was coming out. Um, and an old, a, a friend back from in North Carolina, when I pastored there, I learned that uh, uh, he's a, a pastor uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. He started out there in, in uh, uh, the area where I pastored, Reverend Baxter. Uh, and for some reason, Sister Janice, you may have to help me. His first name will not come to my head. Ronald. Ronald. I was thinking Ronald, but I wasn't sure. I, I wasn't sure. It's been so long since I've seen him. It's been a while, even in, in, at the state convention, it's been a while. But anyway, I got word that his wife uh, is being funeralized today and he is in the hospital. Uh, so we're asking that you please keep uh, Reverend Baxter and family in your prayers, uh, along with all of our sick and shut in members, uh, that God will bless them and strengthen them and keep them uh, focused on God. Amen. So please uh, keep uh, all of these individuals in, our, in your prayers. If you would, please, we would appreciate it. Amen. This time now. I, I can take you, my, I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. Some of you probably saw a little bit of that on the news. Please. There's so much going on, my brothers and sisters. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer. And we just never know how it's going to affect our lives and how it's going to touch us. Uh, so we want to pray one for another. Amen. We're praying for our sick and shut in. It's good to see Sister Grayton come in. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We shall uh, continue to lift you up in prayer. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. All righty. Um, Would you bow with us? Gracious Father, our Lord and our God, we pray now for those individuals that are sick and shut in. Amen. We pray, dear Father, that you will bless them and keep them in your care. Lord, you've heard the prayer request that was been spoken out. And 
Lord, I know you hear the prayer request of all the hearts that are speaking to you right now. Whatever it may be, dear Father, if it's in your will, let it be done. And we'll forever glorify your mighty name. Father, we pray a special prayer, a special blessing upon the Baxter family. Be with them, dear Father, as Pastor Baxter's family is preparing to lay Sister Baxter to rest and where he's lying in the hospital. Lord, we don't know his situation. We don't know what's going on, but we know you are able to do all things but fail. Yeah. So we put him in your hands and say, let your will be done. Bless us, strengthen us, and keep us. And that we'll forever magnify your mighty name. Now, Lord, we want to thank you as we commit ourselves to you and give praises unto your mighty name. Bless us, Father, as your word come forth this day. And we'll forever praise you forevermore. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. This time now we'll have a, have a selection from the choir, then we shall return with the preach word of God. Whatever. 
keeps me going on. Whatever it is, it will make me what I need to be. Amen. And we got to understand that and don't allow anything else to stop us. Amen. I, I took note, the old devil tried to get in there, so. But she stood strong. On the word of God. And she saw that. She did not let the devil. Try to interrupt. What that was. Amen. 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 Don't you mess with that now. I heard you. <laughs> amen. God bless you. God bless you. If you have your copy of the word of God. And not to wear your patience long. And we're going to get out of your way. As quickly as possible. Because we want you to come on over to Rock Hill with us this afternoon at 3 o'clock. <clears throat> if you have your copy of the Word of God, would you turn with us in the Old Testament to the book of Job? The book of Job. Just a couple of verses I'm going to read. Job chapter 42. And I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Job chapter 42, beginning at verse 1, reading verses 1 and 2. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. So we may read just a little different from your standard King James. And it just simply says... <clears throat> Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Just for a few moments, I want to talk from the subject, a life changing lesson a life changing lesson let me simply ask the question have any of you ever had a life changing event I'm sure all of us can speak to something in our lives that we can reflect back on and you say now it was at that moment 
that turned my life around. And I hope and pray that we received a great word or a great lesson from whatever the event was that took place in our lives. Life changing. Life changing. Life changing. It means that it's changing you for life. Simple. It, it, it doesn't mean that uh, when you go through this or when you learn of this, you're going to do good today. But now tomorrow is another thing. Life changing means that I am committed for life. Life changing means that uh, whatever happened, whatever I learned, it simply means that it has changed me not just for today, but it has changed me for life. Now, and I'm not giving anybody an in or an out, but the word teaches that we all mess up. We all fail. Now, don't take that and say, well, that's an excuse for you to go and do what you want to do. And then come back and say, well, I messed up. I failed. It's a difference in, 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 in falling in, 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 in sin and just deliberately going in sin. But life changing means that I have made up in my mind that I'm going to do better from here on out. So we need a life changing lesson in our life. And uh, the Spirit of God led me to Job. Job, uh, a man who, who, who came to mind was trouble. Because many times we only think of our life-changing situations or things that change us in a time of trouble. Amen. You know, there are things that good happen to us that would change us. But many times it's the troubles that really stand out that make us take a look and say, you know, that was a life-changing event. But Job is one. Job, 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 Job was a man of trouble. Uh, but not only was he a man of trouble, you need to understand that Job was a man of faith. Amen. He was a man of faith. So we got to understand that. And when we, you know, we talk about Job, and, we, and many of us, many of us can identify uh, many of us can identify with Job uh, because of all the trials that we face in life. Uh, the many things that he faced and many times we face many trials in life ourselves. Uh, uh, the word of God says in John 16 and, 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 and 33, it said, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're we going to have trials and tribulation. We're going to have trouble. Uh, but Jesus said, be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. In other words, he's saying that nothing that you're going to face in this world, he has not already dealt with. And he has overcome it. And so that simply means that he has overcome it on our behalf. So, so when we start talking about uh, a life-changing lesson and we look at Job and the situation that Job was in, I want you to always remember that God is bigger than our fears and he's better than our faith. Amen. Amen. Yes, I, I, let me say that again. God is bigger than our fears. So whatever, you have, whatever got you afraid, remember God is bigger than that. And I always remember that God is better than our faith. As much faith as we have, God is even better than that. Yeah. Amen. And we can walk around here talking about, oh, I got the faith. I'm, I'm trusting. I got the faith. But let, let something happen. You know, we run up and down the church aisles talking about how much faith we got. Amen. But when we hit the streets and no problems started knocking us up against the head. When, when, when I heard Brother Graydon talking about when the bills come due and the mortgage is due and all that stuff and, 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 when, the, and when the car payment is due and, 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 and your paycheck is much shorter than your bill list. 
uh, when all that stuff start happening and, and then family members want to talk about you, family members want to ignore you, won't, won't, won't accept you, and then church members that's supposed to love you, they'll turn away from you. When all that mess start happening in your life, where is your faith? Where is your faith? So as much faith as you think you have, I want you to know today that God is better than our faith. Amen. Look at Job. Look at Job. Look, look at Job. Job, he lost his family. He lost his fortune. Look, his wife turned against him and even suggested that he curse God and die. That's one thing for your friends, because they don't even speak about it, how, how, how his friends came to visit him, and, and, and they became destructive critics. And now we all, we all need some uh, uh, what we call corrective con con criticism. You know, if, if I've done wrong, do it to correct me. Don't criticize me just to beat up on me. You hear me? That, 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 that's what was happening. They, they, they were just destructive than criticizing. It's one thing when your friends come in talking bad or negative about you, but when your own wife, when your family members, they're supposed to be close to you, tell you to curse God and die. That can hurt. This is what Job was going through. But the point of all this is, Job learned a lesson. What was it that he learned? He learned that nothing takes God by surprise. Amen. Nothing takes God by surprise. Look, how, preacher, how you know what he learned something? Because it says that in verse two, it says in verse two, he says, I know that you can do everything. When you know something, that means you're going to learn something. Amen. That's what that's what Job 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 it, it, it sunk in with all that he had gone through. It, it, Job said, "I know, I know that you can do everything." Yes, sir. And not only that, he says, "I also know that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you." Yes, sir. That just simply means that whatever God has for you just hold on it's coming because it cannot be held be held from God whatever God sent out it's not going to come back to him void so whatever God has placed in you to do whatever ministry he has given for you to do if you just stay focused on it and you do it it will not come back to him void now now sometimes people can get in the way Y'all hear me? Sometimes people can get in the way and they may slow your trip down. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday I, I, I had to go. I had to go up to North Carolina and I, I hated to go that way because I've learned not to go straight up 85 because of all that construction. And I was praying, Lord, please. I know it's, it's weekend, so I hope they ain't up there working so I can shoot on up 85. Uh, uh, but you see, sometimes the, the road get crowded. And, 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 and then God showed me as I was going up and, and 85 South was just a, 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 a bottleneck. I said, thank you, Lord. They had to had to all everybody blocked on the, on the opposite side and we eased on up the highway. But what I'm saying, sometimes people can get in your way. They can they can slow you down. They may slow your trip down. It might have took me a little bit longer to get there. But if it was in God's will for me to get there, I would have got there. What you're saying, preacher, whatever God has given you to do, if you just stay focused on him, even when people want to get in the way, it may take you a little bit longer to do it. But if you hold on, it will be done. There is a lesson for all of us to learn. A life-changing lesson. So when we look at this lesson that Job learned, let me share a few things with you about the lesson that we, how we need to focus on this lesson so we can stay focused on him. First of all, this lesson applies to our families. The lesson applies to our families. 
Now, imagine Job's sorrow. Y'all know this story. All you Bible readers, you, you know the story of Job. Job, how, imagine his sorrow when his children all died. The word said that Job had seven sons and three daughters and lost all their life. But watch this. They died all at the same time. Now, it's one thing that, you know, well, last month I lost a child. Two months ago, three years ago, I lost, I lost this. But now when they all go at once, death itself can be devastating to us. But when the one we love and is that many at one time, just imagine the heartache that Job was going through, the sorrow that he was feeling, how that storm came and struck the building where his children were feasting. And, 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 and look how the word says Job's amazing reaction to this, story, to this tragedy was he just simply said, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then the word says, and this is in Job 1, 21 and 22, and it says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. My brothers and sisters, we're going to go through some hard times, and, and our families will be affected. So we, uh, the lesson that we're learning applies to our family. Uh, uh, Job is still confident. Uh, he did not take God uh, he realized that this did not take God by surprise. And, and his, his rewards were seven more sons and three beautiful daughters. God blessed him because he learned the lesson. He knew that God could do everything. I just wonder, you know, we come in and we talk about we love the Lord. We believe in God. We're trusting him. But do you know in the depths of your heart that God can do everything? Lord, if we know that, then why do we fight each other? If we know that God can do everything, why do we argue? You see, we got to understand that God is in control. Amen. This is God's. That's right. Amen. That's right. It's not mine. Amen. This is the Lord's. Amen. And, the, and the word even says, the earth is the Lord. Amen. And the fullness Amen. thereof. Amen. And they that dwell yes. therein. It simply means that everything that you have, everything, I don't care how long your name been on that title. I don't care how long that name been on the deed of the house. I don't care how many suits you unbought and hung in that closet. I don't care how many dresses you have. I don't care how many hats you have. I don't care how many pairs of shoes you have. If you die, everything that you got is going to be right here. Because the word said the earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. It all belongs to God. Why are we arguing and, over, and fighting over stuff that don't even belong to us? Amen. Amen. And you know, I would look pretty crazy if I went arguing over my neighbor's yard. I don't pay any bills at my neighbor's house. I don't even cut the grass at my house, let alone the neighbor's house. So why should I be over there arguing about what's going on at his house? It belongs to him. Amen. In other words, now, the point I'm making is, if this belongs to God, why are you arguing over it? Amen. Why are you arguing over what belongs to God? We, the lesson that we got to learn is that God can do everything. Amen. Everything. So, so, first of all, the lesson applies to our families. Secondly, this lesson applies to our finances. Uh, Job, as we made, Job had been a very wealthy man. Very wealthy. Yeah, uh, he had uh, uh, much land, cattle, livestock, possessions. Uh, he was wealthy, uh, but all of his wealth was suddenly taken away. But nevertheless, he remained faithful. He remained faithful to God. When we start losing 
what we have. Do we, do we stand faithful to God? It's sad that when, when, when we lose stuff, we lead the church. That's what we need. We lead the church. Broken relationships. Get mad at each other. And instead of coming to the church to make amends and, and strengthen our relationship, we get mad and walk away. We, 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 we got to understand that this, this lesson that Job went through, it, it was a lesson to not only for his family, but to his finances as well. Look, he confirmed uh, that nothing takes God by surprise. Amen. This kind of reaction to trouble is called faith and it is rewarded. Uh, in, in the word of God, Job in Job one and uh, one and two and three, it talks about his possessions. Uh, it talks about how he was, had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. Uh, in other words, he had it going on. He had many possessions. Uh, but all of that stuff was taken away from him. Sometimes God has to remove stuff from our lives to show us that he is the one in control. Sometimes he has to take that stuff because we've gotten too focused on worldly material stuff. And so he has to remove it from us because he has a, a greater job for us to do. He, he has a greater ministry in our lives and, and those things are distracting us. Those things are slowing us down. Those things are, 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 are causing us to stray from the ministry that God has put in us. So sometimes God has to remove those things from our lives. But we got to stand strong. We got to stand faithful and understand that the God we serve is a mighty God. Yes, but Job would ultimately receive double what he had lost. Yes, God is letting us all know that if we just stay faithful to him, he will take care of us. So when we start talking about a life changing lesson. We can understand in this life changing lesson, this lesson, this lesson applies to our families. It applies to our finances, but also this lesson applies to our future. Yes, Job's future was greater than his past. Yes, yes, look at Job 42. Job chapter 42 and verse 10 says, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Yeah, when you learn to pray for one another. When you keep your hand in God's hand, then God will take care of you. You may have lost something today, but if you stand strong on the word of God, God will restore it back to you. Yes, as indeed the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Yeah, his brothers and his sisters uh, and all those, all of his acquaintance, uh, they came to him uh, and ate food uh, with him uh, there in his house. They consoled him and comforted him uh, for all the things that he had gone through. Each one, uh, the word said that each one came and gave him uh, a piece of silver and each a uh, ring uh, of gold. Uh, but I like what verse 12 said. Now the Lord uh, blessed the latter days of Job uh, more than his beginning. Uh, for he had uh, 14,000 sheep, uh, 6,000 camels, uh, 1,000 yoke of oxen, uh, 1,000 female donkeys. Uh, and he also had seven sons uh, and three daughters. Uh, I tell you, God will restore uh, if you stand faithful. Uh, your present day uh, may look bleak and dark right now, uh, but I want to tell you, uh, your future is well taken care of. Uh, if you hold on, to God's unchanging hand. Uh, you may not understand uh, what you're going through right now, uh, but trust and have faith uh, that that same God uh, that brought you this far, uh, he will not leave you uh, all by yourself. Uh, he will uh, take care of you. Uh, I know he will uh, when it seems like uh, you're all down and out. Uh, when it seems like 
that the world is turned against you uh, when it seemed like uh, that nobody want to help you uh, hold on uh, there is a lesson uh, we got to learn uh, from God uh, and that lesson is uh, that God can uh, do everything uh, matter of fact uh, I heard uh, one scripture say uh, he can do all things uh, but fail uh, I come by to tell you uh, whatever purpose uh, God has for your life uh, it will go out uh, it will be delivered uh, God will uh, get the glory out of your life uh, all you got to do is hold on uh, learn the lesson uh, and commit yourself uh, to the glory of God uh, ain't he alright uh, do you know he's alright uh, has God been good to you uh, has he brought you from a mighty long way uh, I don't know about you uh, but I can tell you uh, one day I was sinking deep in sin Far from the peaceful shore Very deeply stained within I was sinking to rise no more But the master, he heard my despairing cry And from the waters, he lifted me I'm safe in his arms I'm safe in his arms I'm so glad that I'm safe because he marched up Golgotha Hill, bled and died for your sins and mine, buried in a borrowed tomb. But early, 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 while the dew was still on the ground, early, early on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And when he got up with all power, I saw him when he looked down through generation after generation after generation after generation after generation. And the spirit stopped by a little church in Shelby, North Carolina. He said, I got work for you to do. I got something I want you to do. I know you don't understand it right now. I know what people are saying to you. But don't worry about that. I got work for you to do. He picked me up and he turned me around. He placed my feet on the solid ground. I traveled, pushed and shoved, knocked and kicked. But one day, he said, I still got you. Don't worry. I got you in the palm of my hand. I came to tell you, Lord Jill, uh, if you hold on, uh, God will uh, take care of you. If you hold on, uh, it may look bleak, uh, it may look bad, uh, but God will uh, take care of you. Because he's the lily of the valley. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's food when you're hungry. Uh, shelter. Shelter in the time of a storm hold on hold on when you go through that life changing lesson look at how it affects your family your finances and your future I've got to understand that this is not all this is not all what you mean preacher whatever God has for me it is for me it's for me he said Brantley he said Brantley I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to go through a few ups and downs I'm going to allow you to experience some bumps and knocks but I want you to always remember that I got you because I placed in you a job that I want you to do. Yes, and look what he said. He said, as much as I love Minister Karen here, she can't do what I want you to do. Yes. And then he said, and you can't do what I want her to do. Yes, he said, you, you got to do what I've called you to do. Yes, Every last one of us have a purpose under the sun. And I want you to know that whatever purpose God has placed in you, Amen. if you stay faithful, Amen. it will not come back to God void. Amen. It will be done. Amen. 
You may be slowed down a little bit. It may not always go the way you want it to go. But I want you to know it will take place. That's what I want you to understand about this life changing lesson. Experience it. Experience it. Sometime, sometime we think that, well, I went out drinking one night, got in a car accident, and I walked out of it. Man, that was a life-changing experience. Could very well be. But you see, everybody's not going to experience that drinking. Everybody's not going to experience a car accident. Somebody may say, well, my house burned down. That was a life-changing experience. Everyone's homes are not going to burn. But every last one of us need to have some type of life-changing experience with God. If it's nothing but simply realizing, as Job realized, he said, God, I know you can do everything when you learn that you know in the depths of your heart well let me put it this way and I'm done Deacon Harrison I know that 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 that God can I ain't saying what he can do you know Deacon Harrison he can do quite a bit but Look at his steps getting shorter. He had already lost his hair. <laughs> Look at me. My eyes are getting dimmer. We're frail. We're human. But you know what? I know God can do everything. Everything. So I come to stand before you today to let you know no matter what takes place in this church I'm putting it in God's hand. No matter what's said or what's done I'm putting it in God's hand. Because I can't handle it. I'm tired of my hair turning gray. I'm tired of me scratching my head. I'm tired of trying to do things that's out of my control. I'm tired of meddling where I don't need to be. God said, Brantley, get out of the way and let me do what I've called you to do. So lounge here, here we are. Here we are. And I hope and pray Just like me, just like me, I'm not beating you up with this. I'm saying just like me, I have learned this life-changing lesson. And I hope and pray you have too. Trust God. Trust God. Put God first. And he will make the difference. Would you stand? Come on, choir. Somebody here today needs to make that commitment of changing your lives. And the only way you're going to do it is surrender your life and your will over to God. That you can experience that life changing lesson. Do you know in the depths of your heart that God can do everything? And know that the purpose that he has placed in you will not be withheld from him. God's will shall be done. The doors of the church is now open. If there is one. If there is one, will you come? Will you come? If there is one, if there is one. Oh, he's speaking to you. Let him speak. Let him speak. Oh, I just want to. I just 
Now in surrendering, the altar is open for prayer. So good. If there are those standing in your prayer, you need desire to come. Oh, have mercy, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. God, you've been so good to me. Oh, have mercy, have mercy. Oh, have mercy, have mercy. I just wanna. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. All you got to do is trust him. He'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. That's all right. That's all right. God is still good. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. My, 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 my. Minister Brockman, will you lead us in this prayer? And as she pray, we ask that every heart will pray. We pray that you will pray for all these that have stepped forward. Especially, we want to thank God for the, for the way that Sister Grayton has pressed her way forward. Yes. Pressed her yes, way here. Yes, yes. Not many others have been down and out, sick and shut in lists. Some have had procedures done. Sometimes you shared it with us and sometimes you didn't. But God is still good. We're going to pray for you. Because the God we serve is a good God. He's a mighty God. And no matter what we're going through, no matter what we experience, we got to learn the lesson that God can do everything but fail. Minister Brockman, will you lead us in prayer? May we bow. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for just being the same God. Mm. When we gave our life to you in the beginning, thank you for being the same God. That same God. That you are now. God, you created this day for your glory, God. You created this day for you, God. But, Lord, you allowed us to be a part of it today, mm. oh, God. So, God, we thank you for that, oh, Lord. So, God, we just ask that you continue to wrap your loving arms around us, oh, God. Continue to be the God that you have always promised. But, God, most of all, most of all, Lord, make us grateful yes. to you, O oh God. Make us thankful to you, O oh God. For God, you're so worthy. Have mercy, Lord. For all that you've done for us, O oh yes, God. Yes, yes. So God, right now, Lord, right now, right now, in the midst of this service, O oh God. Mm. In the midst of this service, O oh God. We ask that you shower down a blessing of healing, oh God. Yes. God, we ask that you shower down a blessing of deliverance, oh God. Right now, Lord, right now. God, we ask that you just shower down a blessing of love, oh God. For God, you have shown through the years, oh God. 
how you can turn trials into triumph, oh God. How you can turn sickness into healing, oh God. The same God. Every morning, God, your mercy is anew. God, every morning we wake up and open our I'm eyes I'm and I'm have I'm the activity of our limbs, oh God, and our hearts are beating right on time, oh God. The same God. Mm. God, before we knew ourselves, before our mothers and fathers knew us, oh God, you knew what we were going to be going you knew through, all oh about God. Us, Lord. Yes, Lord. You knew all about us. And God, you provided. Yes, so God, we can't say anything but thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for showing you, up Lord. here today, thank oh you. God. Thank, thank you, you for Father. allowing your spirit to be yeah. in this building today, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, we can stand here and think of everything that, that you've done for us, and we'd be here all day, oh God. My, my, my. But God, you only did what you promised that you were going to do for us. So, God, those who are weak and sick among us, oh, God, comfort them, oh, God. Heal them, oh, God. Those who are sick in the mind, the body, the soul, oh, God. Touch, Lord Jesus. Touch, Touch them right with now. your spirit of love, oh, God. Move in their lives. God, you are worthy. Mm. You're worthy to be praised, oh, God. Your love is everlasting and your truth yes. endures. All generations. Through all times, oh God. We thank you for that, oh God. So God, let us continue. Let us continue my, my, my. to say yes mm. to your will. Let us continue to say mm. yes, yes to your way, oh God. Yes, Lord. And God, today, mm. woo, starting today, if we didn't do it yesterday, oh my God, Lord. you gave us another day, oh yes, God. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Starting right here, right now, oh God. Right now, Lord. We ask that if we had been unworthy or ungrateful, oh God, mm. that you change us, oh God. My, my, my. Creating us a clean heart and renew us. A right spirit. A right spirit. Yes, yes. And God, we will be careful. So careful. So careful, Lord. To give you all the praise, mm. oh God. All the glory, yes, oh God. Yes. All the lifting your name on yes, high, yes, oh God. Sir. Raising our hands up to you, oh yes, God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We will be so careful to give you all the praise that you My deserve, friend. oh God. No other name to call on except the name Thank of you, Jesus. Lord. In our time of troubles, in our time of sickness, but most of all in our time of healing. Because your name is worthy. Yes, it is. To be praised. So we say thank you. Thank you. And we love you, oh God. Yes. These and all the blessings, oh God. Have mercy, have mercy. That you have bestowed upon us. We will be so careful to give you all the praise. All the honor. And all the glory that you are so worthy of. In your name we pray. Mm. In the name of Jesus. My, my, my. In the name of Jesus we pray this prayer. And the church said amen. Amen. Hallelujah amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God, for your glory. Hallelujah. Thank my, you, my, Jesus. My. Have mercy. Thank have mercy. You,
Hallelujah. 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 All praises be to God. In the name of his precious son, Jesus the Christ. I just, I'm so happy that the Lord let me set foot in Lowndes Hill this day. Every weekend I be thanking the Lord for letting me come to Lounge Hill one more time. But today he truly let me make it. And I praise him. Hallelujah. I praise him. Hallelujah. Because I know what he's brought Ernie and I through. What he continues to carry us through. Every day of my life, I'm in severe pain. Pain that's so bad, sometimes I can barely breathe. This is not sometimes. This is every day day, 24 hours a day. The doctors and the nurses, Ernie took me to the hospital the other night because my primary physician said I needed to go. We had a few problems but I'm never discouraged because I feel that the Lord has put me here for a reason. And one of the reasons that's in my mind and in my thoughts is for man to learn something about the 14 diseases I have that are no cures for. Have mercy. All of them means death. Only God carries us minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. But every day, I'm happy. I'm suffering, but I'm happy. And I praise God, and I sing when I can. And when I can't make a sound, I say it in my mind with tears running down my cheeks. But you can't beat my God's giving no matter how hard you try. Praise God, praise God. I don't care what you're going through. Somebody else is going through something a little bit worse than you. Pray for them. Don't be selfish. 
pray for them. And pray for your enemies all the time. Because through your prayers and your friends' prayers and the minister's prayers and all the other saved people that truly know Jesus and his Father, through them and through Jesus the Christ, maybe one of them may be saved. Thank you, and thank you for Lowndes Hill Church family. Thank you for all the cards. You just don't know how much they mean. Thank you for the cards. Thank you for the calls. Just thank you. I, I know you have forgotten me. Thank you. Just, I know you prayed for me. Continue praying for us. And Ernie needs all the prayers he can get because his plate is running over, but he don't complain. He don't complain. And God keeps him going. But he's always happy every day. God bless you, Lowndes Hill. And we love you. We love you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us say amen. amen. We thank God for how he has blessed us and how he's still blessing us each and every day of our lives. And my brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that there is a life-changing lesson for all of us that we come to know who God is and what he can do. Amen. And it's our prayer that it don't take a tragedy to make you see who God is. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All righty. Uh, all y'all got your offering ready? Got the envelopes already fixed up? Ready? All you got to do is put it in? Amen. All right. Since y'all got it ready, instead of them passing the place now, we're going to ask you to Give it to him when you go out the door. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to say it in a few minutes. Instead of you uh, uh, doing that, uh, just pass it. Are we going to uh, do the blessing and the uh, benediction all at the same time? But uh, the urshers and the trustees will be at the door. Uh, and if you did not get an envelope, raise your hand right quick, and the urshers will get you one. Need one over here, sister. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. To all of our visitors, thank you so much. Brother Dante, Father, amen. I thought that was him. And our, all of our other visitors, thank you so much for coming and being a part of the service today. We pray God's blessings upon you. To all of you, the members, thank you so much for being here. And we pray that you will come again. Uh, come again and continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Upstate New York. All right. Bless y'all. Amen. God bless. Glad to have you. Glad to have you here with us. And, uh, and, and next time y'all in South Carolina, come on. Come on. All right. Amen. Well, when you move here, you got this place. This is home. <laughs> Amen. Matter of fact, uh, you stay in contact with us. And when you move here, you let us know. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much to all of you, to all of our visitors. Thank you all so much. Amen. All righty. I'm, I'm giving you a couple of minutes, those who just got an envelope to give you right in time to put your name in the amount on now. But nevertheless, God is good. Amen. Thank you all so much. Please, the service at Rock Hill begins at 3 o'clock. 
you know, they're ordaining a deacon this afternoon, and uh, we appreciate you coming and sharing with us in that service uh, this afternoon at 3 o'clock at Rock Hill Baptist Church number one. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. We shall continue to be in prayer for our brother, uh, the Gideons. Amen. And continue to pray for them as they uh, oftentimes they pray for us. Unbeknown to you, uh, they keep lifting myself and this church up in prayer. Uh, they do it monthly in their monthly meetings. Uh, and they have a card that they make note of when they have the meetings and, and when they do the prayers. And then at the end of a month or a certain period of time, they will actually mail that card to me here at the church and let me know that for the past month or whatever they have been, or the past uh, three months or whatever, they have been lifting this church up in prayer. So I want to let you know, Lounge Hill, uh, others are praying for us, but we need to be praying for ourselves. Amen. As we made mention, uh, uh, first Sunday, we did the prayer for the leadership. Last Sunday, women, uh, praying for godly women. Uh, today, we pray for godly men. Next Sunday, I want to pray, pray for our youth. I want to pray for our young people. Amen. I want our focus to be on our young people. Uh, we can pray for them uh, and what they're going through. Uh, the young people that's here coming through now, uh, we, didn't, we didn't experience a whole lot of stuff they're experiencing. Amen. Amen. When we come along, we just jumped out in the yard with an old, old tire that the daddy took off the car, and, and we rolled in, and we had a good time. But these young people now, it's a whole different. You start talking about rolling tires up and down the road, they look at you like you crazy. Uh, they're going through a whole different aspect of life. And we got to be praying for them. We got to be praying for them. I tell my grands how we, we didn't have no store-bought wagon. We, we found some old lumber and some old baby buggy wheels. And we built a wagon. Amen. That was, our, that was ours. And, and, and we rode it too. And, and matter of fact, it almost killed me one day. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we rode it. But you see, we need to pray for our young people. We need to pray for them. And so next Sunday's prayer time will be focusing on our youth, our young people. We need to pray for them that, that God will surround them with his grace and his mercy. And that they will learn how they can be a great blessing to this church. Because they can be a blessing to the church if we as old folks will let them. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we got to get out the way and let them come forward. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Everybody got their money ready now, so we're getting ready to go. Uh, anything else? Would you stand with us? We're going to do the prayer. And, and then I'm going to ask you, if you would, once we do the prayer, if you would sit back down, then urshers will come and escort you out so it won't be a bottleneck at the entranceway. And uh, once you get out on the grounds, you can stand out there and communicate and talk and joke and carry on as long as you want to. I'll get in my car and leave you there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Would you bow with us? Gracious Father, we thank you for how great you are. We thank you, dear Father, for all that you have done for us and how you are blessing us. We thank you for your spirit that has indwelled in this place. Lord, continue to shower your blessings down upon us. Continue to allow your spirit to speak to our hearts that we'll serve you forevermore. Father, we want to take time to say thank you for the offering. Thank you for those who have given and those who are about to give. And Lord, we pray that you will bless it, magnify it, and let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on this earth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Now may, now may the grace the sweet communion of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. May he rest, rule, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Let us all sing. And if you would, just remain seated and the urshers will come and escort you out. Thank you so much. We pray God's blessings upon all of you.